KB Sky here with Bonnie to welcome back to the channel and you may not recognize where we are today because we're not in my own home but we're actually in my boss's house he has bugged me and bugged me hey I have a home theater system I have a room I want to set up can you please come over and set up my new home theater system so today that's what we're gonna do so let's see what he's working with so he went out and bought this for Black Friday it's the Calypso Reference Series Satellite Speaker Subwoofer Package. It's a 5.1 system that's actually really good. I recommended this one to him because you can get really big sound out of small speakers for a small space. So it has five speakers. That's a front left, front right, surround back right, surround back left, center, and then it has a wireless subwoofer with it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you guys how you go about starting off your home theater, how you're gonna set it up, how to plan, also, if we get to it, we're gonna mount this Samsung 75 inch TV on the wall too. So let me show you guys what we're working with. So this is Dan's big 75 inch Samsung TV that he wants to hang pretty much where it's at right now. Um, we'll have to see how sturdy that is first, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to put his receiver on that little stand there and put the stand right next to where the TV's gonna be. And that's what we're gonna do for him. His seat is gonna be kind of this far back. So if you look at the wall here, where my stand is, you see the gray part on the ceiling? That's kind of where the couch is gonna be. So we're gonna to wanna to put the speakers just um, to the right of that pole there as a reference point of where to mount our speakers. We will be mounting speakers on the wall today. So you'll see that. But the way you wanna go about this first is you wanna plan where everything's gonna be. So first we're gonna lay out all the speakers around the room where we're gonna be so that we can measure how much speaker wire we are gonna need. All right, so here's what we're working with. So you get five satellite speakers, four of them will be identical, and then you have a center channel. So we'll open up one of these speakers for you guys to see them. So this is the clip speaker here. It's the reference series, so it's a rather heavy, small satellite speaker with removable grills that stick on with magnets. It's a very nice touch. Of course, it has that copper look to it. Very nice. It has a small little port on the back side, as well as some terminals back here on the bottom to fit probably about I'd say maybe 16 gauge maximum 18 gauge will be good for the speaker so you don't need really thick wire but it does have a small driver in there and then a, a tweeter with a waveguide so very nice speaker the center channel is going to be very similar to those satellite speakers but they're going to be horizontal so this one has a really good weight to it two drivers there and then the tweeter in the middle has a kind of a slot port in the back of it. And then again, you have those small 18 gauge push terminals on the back. So that's what we're gonna work with. So we're gonna lay these around the room so we can get an idea of where we want our speakers to go and then we can map out how much speaker wire we need. So we know we want our speakers to be at least six feet across from left speaker to right speaker so that when you're sitting back as far as here, you're at a perfect triangle so that the sound is reaching your ears at the correct time, the correct angle, all that good stuff. So we want to make sure that my speaker is six feet across from left speaker to right speaker is six feet in distance so that you get a good stereo imaging. Now we also want to try to make this as ear level as possible. So this might be just a little too high. We may need to drop this down so that when he's sitting on the couch, um, his tweeters are right at, just maybe right at ear level or slightly above so that the sound um, sounds accurate and, and as intended. So we kind of have an idea where we want to put these speakers. So let's go ahead and put the rest of them around the room and then we can map out how much speaker wire that we need. All right guys, so we have the speakers in place, except the center channel, but I wanted to show you guys what I did is I let it hang a little bit off the wall because they're slightly higher than ear level when he sits down. So I angled them down so that it reaches the ear the way we want them to hit. So both these are angled down and then these speakers here, I may lower them down or I may angle them down slightly too so that they point down to ear level, but these are definitely more than six feet apart, which is good. So the center channel here is probably gonna be more towards 
right down here. I have to see where the TV is going to be, but I think right down there will be the center channel because the TV is 75 inches. So it's going to cover that entire white frame. The whole thing is going to be covered. So I think I'm going to mount the center channel just below it. And that'll actually be sitting right at your level once he's sitting down back here. So that'll be perfect, 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 perfect. And then we can get the receiver and, uh, and get the subwoofer going. So let's go ahead and mount the center channel underneath there, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with the sub. All right, so we're gonna wait on this center channel because the way that it hangs, it, ha it points down. The wall is not supportive enough for the center channel. So we gotta, we're gonna wait on that and mount the TV just so we can see where the TV is gonna be. And then we can figure out the center channel next. We may end up sticking it inside of that cabinet there. We'll see. But right now we're gonna wait on that. Let's get started on the wall mount there for the TV and find a placement for the sub. Let's go ahead and open the sub so you guys can see that. So the subwoofer is the only part that's gonna be wireless in the whole system. But it's nice that it is because it allows us to place this anywhere in the room that we want to so we can put it in the most optimal place that we want to. So here at the bottom here, you have a little, looks like an eight inch driver down here. Um, high excursion, long throw driver. So you're gonna get really good bass out of here. Probably relatively loud too. Small little port next to it. It's just in some really nice wood with a brushed aluminum kind of look to it. Actually feels really good. It has a nice healthy weight to it. And then on the back side, we have, of course your power plug you're gonna need for there, your volume knob, your crossover, your phase, auto on and off, and then your LFE or um, RCA ends right here, right next to it. So just simple, plain and simple, we all expect a subwoofer to look like. Really simple and easy to use, which is exactly why people buy this kind of sound system. They just want something good, but not, not really uh, hard to set up. And this is gonna do well in this smaller room right here. So let's go ahead and find the placement for this. Now it does have the wireless transmitter too which allows you not to not have to run a cord from your receiver to your sub. You will power this, one of them will go to your sub, the other one will go to the receiver, and now you're wirelessly transmitting your, um, your subwoofer to your receiver so you don't have to run a long 18, 20, 25 foot cable across the room. And it syncs, just as soon as you plug it in together, they sync up and they do really good. So we're gonna fire this up here in a second, find a place for it, and then we'll move on to the wall mount. All right guys, so I decided to put the sub kind of in the corner, not completely, a little bit pulled off away from the wall. And the reason being is because it's a smaller subwoofer, so it's gonna need a little bit of help getting down below maybe 35 or so hertz, being how small the sub is. So I put it towards the corner to try to help reinforce a little bit more bass so he can get a little more sound out of it. And then of course, aesthetically pleasing as well, that kind of matters to him too. So I put it there, so when he's sitting back here in his listening position, it's gonna be kind of tucked into a corner to help bring up some of the bass towards the lower notes when it starts to drop off. Um, and then it's in a good location as far as not having it tucked into this corner, because this corner he's gonna put some guitars and stuff that he has. And we don't wanna tuck it into this corner anyway, because you can see it's kind of recessed away from the room. So it's gonna have a lot of acoustic issues back there. So the best place right now, I'm gonna start with here. My next option being wireless, maybe right next to the couch back here or somewhere on this back wall, but we'll have to see. But for right now, I have it sitting kind of catty corner back there and we'll see how that works. All right guys, this is the part that I was dreading to get to, putting the wall mount up. Now, first and foremost, you really wanna make sure that you have a stud finder and find your studs. You never wanna mount really anything heavy on the wall without finding studs, because that's the point of the studs is to help support the weight of whatever it is that you're hanging. And in this case, we're hanging a 75 inch TV to a wall. You don't wanna just hang it up and hope that it lasts, because even if it does hang for a moment, this is downstairs, so all the walking above us, the music playing, the subwoofer, it's gonna rattle those screws free, and eventually it's gonna fall, and we can't have that. So we're gonna mount this. I found my studs, we're mounted good. Luckily there was a TV here beforehand, so I've already kinda of had it mapped out for me, so we're gonna try to reuse what they did, and then mount our TV here, and plug it in down here, so everything is recessed and hidden away. So I love that. I love that I kind of have a map already outlined for me. So we kind of already got that started. So let's go ahead and try to get this mounted and get it to get the TV up there. I'm kind of nervous, guys. 
what if it falls? What if it falls? What if I mount this and it falls? What if it falls? It's my boss, he's gonna, he's gonna fire me. Guys, he's gonna fire me if, I, if it falls. Oh my God, what if it falls? What if it falls? <sighs> oh man, we got it up there, guys. This is the most nerve wracking thing that I think I've ever done. Ever. This is my first time ever wall mounting a, a TV. I probably shouldn't say that because now he's going to be worried about it, but it's up. <laughs> it is up. This is a 70 inch Samsung television. The specific model that he has is the UN70NU6070F. That's the big long model name of it. It's the six series 4K TV from Samsung. You can find this right now about 600 bucks from Best Buy or Walmart or wherever you like to shop. But guys, we got the TV up and it looks really good. Have it nice and centered. And now it gives me an idea of where I wanna put their center channel. I'm kind of thinking, should I put it above the TV and point it down or try to mount it underneath like I thought I wanted to do. So we're gonna figure that out too. And then we're gonna introduce you guys to the receiver of his choice. We're gonna put the speaker wire into the speakers, run calibration, and then we'll be done. Cannot wait. Oh my gosh, guys, the TV's up, but what if it falls? What if it falls? What if I go home tonight and it falls and he calls me and says, I'm fired. Oh my God, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. All right, guys. So Dan has chosen the Yamaha RXV381 from Accessories for Less. Now, I told him to go to that website because they have really cheap discounted things that are trustworthy from a good manufacturer, from a good reputable site. So he went and got himself an RXV381. Now, this is Yamaha's entry level receiver. That's just going to give you the 5.1 that he's looking for and give him calibration so he can tailor it to the environment that it's in. So first and foremost, this is a refurbished product, but refurbished doesn't necessarily mean used. It could be open box, it could be a demo unit, or it could be something simply where that was returned. And I think in this case, he got something that was returned. It doesn't look like it's been opened at all, or at least it's very well packaged. So first and foremost, we have our goodie bag in here. Now the first thing that we have here is Yamaha's microphone. This is going to allow us to place it on the couch when he gets one in here and calibrate each speaker to sound its best in the room that it's in. So this is our calibration mic that will plug straight to the receiver so that we um, can tailor that to his room. The next piece is the online manual or the owner's manual on the disc. Now you can just refer to this online on Yamaha's website or anywhere. You don't have to use a disc. Most people don't have a use for them anyway, but you do have that still in the box. Yamaha gives you a really basic and easy remote to use. Now this is gonna allow you to go through FM, AM radio, TV, CD, DVD, whatever you're gonna be using, switch through inputs, volume up and down, just simple and easy to use. You have an FM and an AM antenna. If you're still somebody who likes to listen to radio inside the house, you do have the options to do so. I just dropped the batteries down here, but that's a nice touch. I love it when manufacturers put batteries in their boxes. And then you have a quick start guide that we won't be needing today because I'm pretty familiar with Yamaha and everything that they do. Now the last thing that's in here, of course, is the receiver. So let's get the box off the uh, table here so that the receiver can sit on top. Here's the beauty itself, the Yamaha RX V381. Now I recommended this one to Dan because he's an avid music lover. He loves listening to music. He likes watching movies and stuff too, YouTube every now and then, but he really wanted something that was gonna be musical. And Yamaha pairs really well with Klipsch products, especially the reference series that he purchased. So here is the 381. It's gonna have your basic formats like Dolby or DTS, those tracks like that. No Adobe Atmos, nothing special like that, just plain and simple, but will sound really good. So here's the front face, which you're, which you're used to. You have your microphone input right next to the power button. If you're somebody who likes to listen with headphones, you have a headphone jack right there. You have an input selector, a tone control for bass and treble. You have your scene selection, so that's Blu-ray or DVD, TV, CD, or radio. You have your program, so you can switch through through stations, FM, AM stations, or such, depending on what menu you're in. You have your straight button. That's gonna be like your pure direct mode. It shuts off all the speakers except the front two. And that's gonna be used for music purposes. Now, on the top side, next to the screen, you do have your info button, memory presets, FM, AM, and your tuning, as well as your big volume knob on the far right. Really simple and easy to use. Let's flip it around on the back side and take a look at that. All right, so the guys, this is a five channel system, 5.1. So the three push terminals you have there, spring type terminals are gonna be for the center and surround speakers. And then you have the banana plug type terminals, the twist terminals are gonna be for the front speakers. 
Now just above that, it's gonna be your FM AM antenna connections, and then you have a non-detachable power plug on the right side. Now you have four HDMI ins on the back side. They are HDCP 2.2 compliant, as well as one HDMI out. That I do not believe is ARC, but we'll have to test that. You do have some legacy connections on the bottom left, and then your subwoofer pre-out is on the bottom as well. All right guys, so the next order of business is go ahead and map out our speaker wire. Since we know where our, our speakers are gonna be and we know where our receiver is gonna be, we now have an idea of what speaker wire we're gonna need. So I went ahead and just got some speaker wire from Lowe's. It's 18 gauge, 100 feet. Um, so it's very inexpensive, it's about $15.99. So I got two rolls of this. There should be plenty enough to do the speakers. So we're gonna start with the rear speakers and run them through the ceiling to make sure we have enough because obviously the front ones are closer to the receiver than the back ones are. So we're gonna start with the back side here, run the wire through the ceiling and then meet it down towards the receiver where it's at now and then we should be good. So speakers are up and in place now. And so there's a lot of different ways we can go about this. This is the easy, simple, not professional way to do it. Just tucking the speaker wire into the ceiling. Now it's a temporary thing because he's gonna, he can do a lot of things with this. He can drill holes in the wall and go through the wall. He can route it through the ceiling a little bit differently. He can get cable hiders and just put some cable hiders up the wall so this is gone or something like that. So it's a sim simple and temporary fix that if he wants to do something else with it, he can. If he wants to upgrade speakers, he can. If he wants to move it, if he doesn't like how I did it, he can change it. So this is a super temporary kind of setup here. Wire hiders would be really nice right there, those white ones, or he can even get tan ones and paint them, whatever he wanted to do. And then we have the receiver tucked into the corner. Now, I recommend getting some cable hiders for this too, a nice little strip that makes it nice and clean, and then paint that. You'll never know it's there, and the receiver kind of hides away in the corner so that when you're watching TV from back here in a listening position, you have no idea that any of that stuff is back there and all the lights that come from the receiver won't be obstructive to your, you know, your viewing pleasure. He wanted it to be there, but I decided to move it there because all those wires would have been sitting right there. It would have been kind of terrible. You can even run the wires along the floor 
and do it that way if you like to. It's the same distance, but I didn't have any uh, cable hiders, so I didn't do it that way, but lots of different things. So let's go ahead and turn on the receiver and show you guys how to set up calibration, and then we should be done. All right guys, so once you have your speaker set up and all the wires and everything, or everything's where you want it to be, now it's time to set up calibration. So the first thing you do when you turn on your receiver, most likely it came with a little microphone. This one is Yamaha's YPAL microphone that's gonna be used to calibrate all five speakers and the subwoofer. So what we wanna do is plug in this in here to our receiver and then turn on the receiver. The first thing it's gonna do is pop up a menu screen for us to get started. So I'm gonna go put this on the tripod and I'm gonna go put it in the, in the position I think he'll be sitting in and we'll go ahead and have calibration. I'll have him do this again whenever he gets his set up, gets his couch, gets his furniture because the acoustics will be different at that time. Um, so we'll do it for now just to have something going and then we'll do it again when he has everything set in place. Before we get set up with calibration, I wanna show you guys how to set up the Klipsch wireless subwoofer that comes in the box. And this is gonna be kind of a, the general concept for all wireless transmitters if you're looking to get one. So first and foremost, this is the wireless transmitter there that allows us to wirelessly transmit the subwoofer frequencies to the subwoofer without having to tether a line to it. So this allows us a lot of different placement options within the room, behind the couch, side wall, front, the back, wherever you want to put it, this will allow us to do that because it has the range to do so. So this is the module itself. And on the module, you'll have a small little um, RCA jack here. That's your subwoofer cord that's going to go to the back of your um, receiver. So you'll plug that into the back of your receiver. It has its own independent power. And then this is the power cord to the subwoofer. On the back of the subwoofer is a pairing button, kind of like a Bluetooth pair mode, but for the sub. The sub has its own built-in receiver. So this is the transmitter built into the amplifier is the receiver. You're gonna sync that button with the uh, transmitter there and it's gonna communicate back and forth. And then it will pair automatically with a LED light to indicate so. And now you've officially paired your wireless subwoofer to your receiver. All right guys, so we're pretty much ready for calibration. Sub set up, I went through and did a quick sweep so I can make sure all the speakers are working and they are. Unfortunately, that outlet right there isn't giving any power, so we're gonna have to figure that situation out. We'll see if that's even a good spot for the sub after calibration is done. But everything is set up and good to go. So actually this room is slightly off-centered. So his TV is kind of off to the left of the room. And this is why calibration is so important. We gotta get that correct. This speaker right here on his right is gonna end up being closer to his ear at listening position than his left, which means so is the left speaker on the, on the front, it's gonna be farther away from his ear than the speaker on the right. So calibration is gonna help us dial that in to get delays and levels and such correct. So I have the, the mic right here on my tripod, right at ear level. We're gonna go ahead and let Wipeout do calibration and then we'll take a listen and see what it did. <laughs> All right, guys, so YPAL is really quick. It's always been pretty fast, but this is the most basic version of YPAL calibration, so it's pretty quick. So let's go into the configuration and see what it did. Let's go straight to the level. So you can see on the screen, most of our values are above zero. And if you watch my channel a lot, you know that we don't really want them above zero. Because when you set your volume knob to zero, that's reference level. And when you set your gains, which is what a level is, it's a gain. When you start to get into the positives, you start to introduce clipping into the system. So I don't really like having these values above zero, um, but we'll leave them as is and I'll listen to them. We have the subwoofer at negative 10 because it has its own amplifier, but I'll listen to this first and see what I think or hear what I think, and then uh, we'll, we'll adjust them as needed. Now my distances, I like to leave them how they are because typically this is gonna be correct. If you look down at the bottom, the subwoofer says 37.6 feet. Leave that there. It's not that far away, but the transmitter, the delay that it has, this is why we get the value that we have. So leave that where it is. That's because we're wirelessly connected. That's why my value is so far away. Now you can kind of see how good I did with keeping distances pretty accurate. Like I told you, he's closer to one set of speakers than the other. So his front left and front right are relatively close together. 
His center is about the same, and then his surround sound, that's where you can really see. The right is about four feet away, and the surround left is about six feet away. So the room is a little bit off balance. It's not directly centered, which is okay. So calibration corrected that for us, so we should be getting the sound delay and the levels and stuff that we're, we're supposed to. All right, guys, so everything's set up, cleaned up, got it looking good. So the last thing we're going to do is play a couple demos for you. I don't have, he doesn't have a DVD player yet, so I can't play any Blu rays like that. So we're going to have to just do some kind of action um, film or some kind of trailer for you guys. But unfortunately, for copyright reasons, I'll have to blur the picture off the screen. But take a listen and tell me guys what you think in the comments down below. My freaking camera died at the very end, but we're finished now. We are done. <sighs> it sounded so good. I really, really enjoy it. I've never heard the clip small little satellite speakers, but it sounds really good. I'm very impressed with that guy down there. It sounds, wow, it sounds so good for a little eight inch speaker. It had a lot of bass in there. It didn't sound muddy. It sounded tight, of course, as you expect out of a small speaker. And the placement of it was really good too. It didn't, I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but it was doing its job and I absolutely loved that. This is a really nice little system right here. This 5.1 system, this is really good. This room's not very big either, so it kind of fits this room and it just, this sounds really good without any kind of acoustical treatment whatsoever. Raise your hand if you just got dizzy, because I did. <laughs> With that being said, guys, if you, if you care about me, leave me a comment down below. Like this video, because I could be fired. This, this, this could fall. This could fall, and then my job's done. So guys, please, like this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of a job that I did my first time ever hooking up somebody else's home theater. So let me know how I did in the comment section below. What kind of things would you have changed, what you have done if you were the one doing this today? Leave me a comment, hit that like button, and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you in the next video at my house. Peace. Yeah.